Hello, vinyl community. Headley here. I'm fat, I'm bearded, and I'm going to talk about records. Um, I've been on a couple of excursions, which has resulted in um, a substantial record haul. Uh, so I thought I'd uh, show some of the stuff I've got. This is going to be a two-parter extravaganza, um, just so it doesn't go too long and I can keep each of the videos short enough so that no one switches off. Don't switch off! Keep going. So, um, the first one I'd like to, to sort of show you is um, I went with uh, Mrs. Another Fat Bearded Man Talks About Records and her mother to a place near Barnsley where there's a, um, a kind of a well-preserved Victorian working village called Elsica and they've kind of uh, done it up and turned it into a kind of a shopping um, village where each of the shops or each of the, the buildings and um, warehouses and things have become shops and you can go to the and find the oldie sweet shop and things like that uh, there's a big antiques um, uh, emporium as well so I went there with uh, the missus and her mother and um, Lo and behold, when we get there, the first shop I spy is a record store. Um, now, between you and me, I didn't let my girlfriend know that I knew that there was a record store there. So I played all, oh, look at that, look, there's a record store. Who'd have thought that? Oh, well, I suppose I'd better go and have a look. So she went off with her mum and uh, I went into the record store and it's a vinyl tap um, store which is a spin-off from the one which is a big favourite of mine they have in Huddersfield. So um, without further ado um, I'll show you what I picked up. It, it was a bit expensive, there was a lot of sort of rock and prog and things like that, not in brilliant condition I have to say. But it was fun to have a look round, uh, and eventually I did find some stuff to my liking. So, first of all, this is Carleen Carter, Musical Shapes. This is from 1990. Carleen Carter is the daughter of June Carter and Carl Smith. Um, and she, um, at the time of this recording, was... And I'll show you the back as well. Um, she was married to Nick Lowe, who actually produces this album. Um, and it's also got um, uh, Dave Edmonds on it. In fact, uh, I don't know a huge amount about, about Dave Edmonds and, and Nick Lowe, uh, but apparently they performed or together as a, in a group called Rock Pile, which because each of them were on different labels, Rather than becoming a rock pile album, each album was either a Dave Edmonds album or a Nick Lowe album, and I think there was only one rock pile album. And this is basically a rock pile album, but with Carleen Carter um, adding the vocals. Um, it's a really, really nice album. So it's got that kind of straight ahead, rocky kind of um, what they call what, pub rock that Nick Lowe was so famous for but twinned with the country elements and um, I knew this because it has it's on the uh, F-Beat uh, label and I think I think the first Elvis Costello album was on the F-Beat label I might be wrong um, I'm not gonna fish it out to see uh, I, I knew about this track there's a track where she does a duet with um, Dave Edmonds called um, Baby Ride Easy which is a lovely tune um, and I got on a compilation or something so it was nice to find this um, and inside we get a rather nice Carleen Carter oh I can't get far enough away there we go Ooh. a Carleen Carter poster so that's going to go straight on the wall well, or maybe not maybe it'll go straight back in the sleeve hang on, here we go that'll probably never come out again anyway, so um, really smashing album that um, kind of 80, it, 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 it has that country tinge but like I said it's got that sort of uh, late 70s early 80s um, UK uh, sort of rock kind of element to it um, it's only spoiled by last, uh, last, last track which is called Too Proud which has got horrible sort of modulated guitar sounds and it's just nasty um, here we go 
we've got uh, Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstadt, Emily Lou Harris trio. This is the first of two albums. They should have done three, shouldn't they? A trio of trio. Um, and it's a, an album of them all singing together. They, 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 their voices mesh beautifully. They've got each of them have got very distinct voices, but they mesh wonderfully. Um, on the first track, "The Pain of Loving You" is just beautiful. Um, and yeah, it's a it's a great album. I've got it on CD, so it's nice to get a copy of this on vinyl. There's a really nice um, inner sleeve actually. If you look at it with them all, there, you can cut out. The, the girls and, and put them in different costumes. I like the fact that um, Emmy Lou Harris over here is far more demure than the other girls. There we go. So there's Dolly, there's Linda Ronstadt, and there's Emmy Lou Harris. Um, oh, I've got a bit of a crush on Emmy Lou Harris. Actually, I've got a bit of a crush on all of them. Um, I only found out recently, sadly, that um, Linda Ronstadt. Uh, has Parkinson's and can't sing anymore, so that's that's really sad. Um, yeah, so this is um, album I picked up. This is called um, this is Cornbread. I don't know if you can see Cornbread, and it's called uh, It's Hot. Um, and I love the groovy cover. Can you guess what sort of music this is? Uh, it's progressive bluegrass. Um, it's it's great. It's got great um, playing on it, even though. We've got this hideous electric electric bass guitar there, which is a no-no in my my book when it comes to bluegrass. They're from, they were from LA. This is from 1978, um, and uh, yeah, it's a, a, a great album. Um, really good playing. Uh, there's a cover version of, uh, of an Elton John song on here, but let's not hold that against them. Um, and uh, yeah, great. Great playing, great picking, uh, all quality musicians, singing's not, nah, not, not, not brilliant, um, and and it's on um, a rather groovy, um, uh, yeah, red vinyl. And I quite like the the, the label. Um, Sierra, Sierra Briar Records, which is very nice. Um, I don't really like. Coloured vinyl and things like that. I think they're a gimmick generally. I mean, it's a kind of fun. Um, I, in fact, the first the first videos I ever watched of people showing records was, was when some youngsters would be showing their vinyls and they would go to town on all the coloured vinyl and stuff like that. I can take it or leave it. In fact, I wish sometimes they wouldn't produce them on coloured vinyl. So after leaving that store, um, after finding those, I, I went across to the Antique Emporium. Um, so amongst all the various uh, um, cabinets full of um, jewellery and, and trinkets and things like that, and the uh, furniture, antique furniture, there was a record stall. Um, and I, so I had a bit of a, a look through there uh, and found this kind of interesting thing. This is um, Colourblind James and the Death Valley Boys and it's Strange Sounds from the Basement. And this is on Cooking Vinyl. This is um, from 1990. And I, I had no idea what it was. I hadn't heard of them. Uh, I just thought I'd... Uh, I did what I normally do. I have a look inside and I see what the... Uh, the instrumentation is and uh, I could see this had uh, mandolins, dobro, banjos, washboard, oh, oh, oh. it's got a washboard on it um, and a trombone and, um, and it's the main trombone player it's not like one track and it, it's kind of rootsy country um, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of nice um, it's a bit lacking in production it's kind of a bit weedy um, but there's some funny songs on here, Strange Sounds from the Basement being one of them, and uh, Jesus at the Still. So you've got a bit of uh, cooking up some uh, some hooch to give to Jesus. Um, yeah, a two-headed girl, that's another good one. But they're kind of funny, uh, rootsy, country, folky. Yeah, not bad. Quite pleased with that. Um, and then moving on from that stall, I found a, a thing selling 50p records, so I've got a Hank Williams here. The legendary Hank Williams. I thought actually that this would 
be lots of stuff I've already got, but when I got it home and actually um, checked uh, the track listing, it, I found out actually that it had quite a lot of stuff that um, I didn't have on it. So things like uh, I'll Never Get Out of This World Alive, which is probably one of my favourite songs of his, and Setting the Woods on Fire. So, and you can't go wrong with Hank Williams. Unless, unless it's that bloody Hank Williams with strings. Nobody buy that. It's horrible. I haven't bought it, and I wouldn't buy it. So, yeah, there you go. Right, so, now, moving on from Elsica, um, uh, sort of heritage village, um, a couple of, uh, a week or so later, uh, the missus and her mother went out on one of their excursions and went to a place near Harrogate called um, Crimple Beck, Crimple Hall, uh, which is a kind of a garden centre. But they've got a great big uh, antique centre there as well. And they came back with reports um, that they had some records there. So, if, if the missus is telling me they got records, if I go and buy records, that's not my fault. That's her fault. Yeah. Nothing to do with me. I'm exonerated of all responsibility. So I trundled myself along and I I was amazed at what I found. Um, my girlfriend, uh, she gave me no indication of what I was going to be confronted by. Uh, and I expected, a, she said there were some piles of records. Um, and when I got there, there was a whole corner of, of, of one of the buildings full of piled records on shelves, um, high, low, masses of them. And in fact, it was almost overcoming. You sort of get there and go, oh my God, there's no way I can possibly look through all of these. But you know, I'm a man with a bit of grit. I can do it. I can flip for hours. That sounded a bit rude. Um, yeah, anyway, I, so I looked through these. Now, 99% of them were classical music. I like classical music. Uh, I just wasn't, I didn't kind of go there to buy classical. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I will probably go back at some point to, to have a look and pick out some of the choice. Because there was a lot of sort of Deutsche gramophone and um, quality stuff uh, there. Um, I, I'll start showing you what I got. Um, and actually, the first one is a classical record. Although it says jazz, this is Simon Rattle, the jazz album. I got this mainly because um, it's got uh, Rhapsody in Blue by Gershwin on it. I don't have a copy of that. Um, so that's really nice to have it. It does say original version. I do need to do some little bit of research into this. Um, what, what exactly is the difference between the original version of Rhapsody in Blue? Um, because I've listened to this and it is an orchestrated version and I wasn't sure if maybe the first one was a piano piece. Um, and it's got Stravinsky on here as well, um, the Ebony Concerto. Um, and a lot of um, tracks like, songs like Making Whoopi, My Blue Heaven, um, After You're Gone, which are sort of given the, the orchestral treatment. But a nice album, really kind of something nice to put on that. On a kind of a, uh, a late summer's evening, and just relax too. This is Men They Couldn't Hang, uh, the Domino Club. Um, this is a band I'd never really heard. I'd, I'd heard of them, I'd seen their records about. Uh, oh, I should point out, I didn't say all of these records were a pound that I was going through, so everything was a pound. Um, and actually, what I did was I I, uh, I picked out I think, 22 uh, um, records eventually, and they did a deal if I paid by cash. So they're all less than a pound. So this is, um, yeah, uh, The Men They Couldn't Hang, and they this is on um, the Silvertone label. For those of you that know, that was the label that released um, the Stone Roses' first album. And this is from 1990, so kind of around that time actually. Um, and I, I wasn't quite sure what it was going to be, um, and it's rootsy, kind of uh, folky rock. And actually, if I'd have picked this up probably back in 1990 when it came out, I'd have probably loved this, I'd have digged this, I'd have re I really have um, digged, dug. No, that's what sounds like a man. Um, no, I'd have really got into this. And it's a, it's a good album, it's, you know, if you like um, some of the, the Pogues, the Oyster Band, uh, it's kind of that. It's um, got fiddle playing, accordion on it. In fact, I think the fiddle player is 
borrowed from the Wonder stuff. So it's kind of indie, indie folk rock. Yeah, not bad. The first of the country. I was really pleased to find this. This is a double Buck Owens, two albums of his. Um, what are they? They're called uh, If If You Ain't Lovin' and You're For Me. Um, nice double up. Yeah, now, it's a bit whiffy this one. This is one, as you can see, it's not in great condition, this bit of a ring wear and stuff. Um, but the worst thing about it, this one's got a bit of a whiff to it. It's got that foisty kind of smell. Does anyone out there know a remedy for this? Um, I mean, I put it, I, I, I take these all out, I put them all in sleeves when I got them. Um, but I take them out to show them just to stop with the glare. So at least if I put them in the sleeve, it does separate it out from spreading the smell to other records. But if anyone has any any tips on how to remove foisty, mouldy smell from records, um, I would love to know. So Buck Owens, great stuff. Buck and the Buckaroos. Um, yeah, um, nice um, uh, straight ahead sort of. Um, Bakersfield Country. Ricky Skaggs. Um, that's it. Uh, this is um, uh, an album of his from. Uh, did you do? Can't see. Like late seventies, I think. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. Um, Anyway, I wasn't sure because I know some of his, although he's a traditionalist, uh, bluegrass um, player, fiddle player, um, some of his stuff going into the 80s was a bit more sort of uh, progressive, rocky kind of stuff. Um, uh, but this, I put this on and it's beautiful, just straight ahead, lovely uh, folky bluegrass, a lovely album, Ricky Skaggs. Okay, now this is one of the first records I found. Now, bearing in mind, I have to say, look, these took me an hour and a half, probably, to fish all these records out, um, out of the piles and piles and piles that were there. Um, I got hot and sweaty, it was nasty, and if anyone ever came near me when I was trying to go through these, especially the pile when you've, when I put aside the ones, if anyone would go anywhere near them, I'd sort of look at them, fix them with a, a steely gaze and sort of, you know, as if, as, you know, like Dracula almost or something that had been discovered in his tomb, and they kind of just went away. Um, anyway, Ennio Morricone, uh, I Weston, um, it's a nice original um, pressing of this um, and the thing I like about this the most is yeah it, it's I'm a bit worried actually because I saw Hugo Montenegro's name on here and I think the um, the version of the good the bad and the ugly is is a version by Hugo Montenegro but the rest of it is by um, um, Eren, Ennio Morricone and orchestra and the one that was really pleased with it, it's got some of the sort of songs from um, Lonesome Billy. Uh, I don't know if it's all in Italian. Um, anyway, yeah, really nice. I like Ennio Morricone. He's one of the greatest um, scorers of films um, it's from all his spig spaghetti western stuff uh, right up to Cinema Paradiso, The Mission. Um, oh, he's hands down one of the greats so yeah nice to pick that up um this is jerry reed the bird jerry reed hot guitar picker known as the claw because of his claw style playing um you might know him there he is that's in there you might know him from playing uh, the snowman in the in the smoking the bandit films uh, and anyway, this is an album from, uh, this is a slightly later one, 1982 album, The Bird. And the, the, it's, it's, the main song is, is, is The Bird. And this is The Bird in Question here. And the song is about this parrot that a guy gets sold because it can do impressions of country music singers. So it's a kind of a funny song and I think it just gives someone an opportunity. Now, I thought it was Jerry Reed that did the 
So yes, the bird does impressions of country music singers. So it, it does an impression of Willie Nelson and it does an impression of George Jones. Now I did think it was actually um, Jerry Reed. It was one of his things that he could imitate these other country singers. Um, but when I'm looking at this, I was led to believe that it says additional vocals by Hal Coleman on the bird. Now, I couldn't hear any other voices apart from the voice of the bird singing. So I'm a bit disappointed that it's not, if it's not Jerry Reed. If anyone knows about that, let me know. So yeah, it's a nice, probably the best track on here, Down on the Corner, um, Red River's on here. Uh, she Got the Gold Mine, I Got the Shaft. That's a good one, I love that track. Anyway, Jerry Reed. Okay, just a couple more. This is the Candy Skins. Um, fun? Question mark. Fun? There you go. Um, and they are, were, um, an indie rock, British indie rock group. Um, I, think, I think they're British. I'd hate to find out they were Irish or something. Um, I don't mean I hate to find out, I mean it just means I'd be wrong. But um, yeah, Candy Skins. It's got a bit of a sticker on here, I might try and get that off. And somebody's written something on there as well. But, um, it's a promotional copy. I know people get really excited when they're a promotional copy. Uh, it just means no bugger bought it. Um, it's just been given away. Um, so yeah, um, they are an indie rock group. Um, this is from 92, 3, something like that. And um, a bit kind of blur, early blur, Stone Roses, jangly guitars, um, that sort of era. It's great. I haven't had a great listen to it yet, but um, uh, if I'm in a sort of a, uh, a, a mood for some uh, old UK indie okay, band so going on. The last record I'm going to show in this part of the video, um, before we have a, a break, for me it'll probably be about a minute, for you it could well be a week. Um, so. I gave James Griffiths, the vinyl professor, some hard time uh, in a comment I made about um, uh, a trio of Phil Collins records that he bought at a charity shop. Now I'm afraid I'm no fan of the uh, the little drumming hobbit. Um, I know that you like, um, a lot of you out there like Genesis, so you like him because of that. Um, but everything about his music was everything I hated about the 80s and pop music and everything like that so I'm sorry and I gave James uh, and I think Grebo 69 did as well so it's not just me um, so anyway I thought I'd give him an opportunity to get his own back and mock one of my purchases now um, here we go so are you ready <laughs> Enya Watermark. Um, now, um, this is from 1988. When I was younger, um, I, I, my parents listened to a lot of folk music. Um, so I grew up listening to folk music. That was kind of where classical and folk music was, was how what I was grown up. I grew up listening to. So um, when I first heard Clannad doing the soundtrack to uh, Robin of Sherwood on the TV, which was a great TV show back in the 80s. Um, I just fell in love with their music. And, you know, they had this folky kind of ethereal sound. Um, their earlier stuff is kind of more straight ahead Irish folk with eventually it becomes more and more sort of progressive. And they, with the sound of the, the, the voices and things, they, they, they're Celtic, but they look to kind of the Breton Celtic sounds as well. So if you go to parts of France, you've got a very similar sound to their folk music. Anyway, now Enya is one of the is a sister of members of um, Clanad, and she was in Clanad for a couple of a couple of their albums um, before going off to to record her own. Now, this is the one that's got Orinoco flow on it. You know, sail away, sail away, sail away. Um, but James, yeah, mock away. I don't care. I'm big enough, I'm man enough, I'm beardy enough um, to take it. I like this record. Um, it's, uh, yeah, 
she's got a great voice. It's that ethereal sound. It's got some lovely production and sort of layered drony kind of harmonies. Yeah, anyway. Enya, watermark. So, that's the end of the first half. Don't go away because I'll be right back in about a week with part two. So thank you for watching. I've been another fat bearded man talking about records. Bye bye for now.